New Zealand is the land of crystal clear rivers, beautiful scenery, clean air, and big, big trout. Few places on earth can rival the rich experiences New Zealand fly fishing has to offer. Don and I visited New Zealand last November, which is spring, the start of the trout fishing season. We had an absolute ball, a trip of a lifetime, three weeks of sheer bliss. It was a wonderful, wonderful fly fishing experience and we'd like to share it with you. We hope you enjoy watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. We will show you the many types of rivers we fished, the importance of having a guide with you, the fishing techniques we use, the importance of having the best and most suitable equipment, two fly tying demonstrations, and a look at some of our most successful flies, the all important planning and preparation, and of course, some fishing sequences. The size of New Zealand is about the same as Britain, with a total population of the two islands of about 3.8 million, three quarters of whom are in North Island. We flew into Christchurch and started fishing in central South Island around Twizel. This is close to the Southern Alps which is dominated by Mount Cook. We also fished around Lake Tianu in Fiordland, part of the Southland district. The area of Fiordland on the west coast is one of the wettest places on the planet, receiving an annual rainfall of well over 295 inches. Out of respect for the environment and ecology in New Zealand, we will not be naming the rivers we fished. Whatever type of river you like to fish, you can certainly find it in New Zealand. The climate and geological variation gives rise to a huge diversity in river character and river types, ranging from large, powerful rivers to gentle streams. In central South Island, we fished a number of different rivers. One in particular was a small lowland stream quietly meandering its way through an arable landscape amazingly like our beloved Derbyshire Wye, with weeds over a silt and shingle riverbed. Southland rivers, by contrast, are often big, fast and bold. The current moves through powerfully, making wading very tricky, if not downright dangerous. Many snow-fed wilderness rivers can become rapidly unfishable due to heavy rain, but can clear within 12 hours. Fjordland rivers often run crystal clear. Many are boulder strewn, which creates plenty of current differential for foraging trout. These boulders and drop offs create interesting holding areas for the fish. Beautiful pools abound. Like most anglers visiting New Zealand, we use the services of professional guides. Our guides, Steve Carey and Dean Bell, are both members of the New Zealand Guides Association. To us, they were indispensable. As we go through this journey, you'll see just how much we relied on their expertise. Because of the changeable weather, even previous personal experience cannot compare with the knowledge of a guide who is out fishing every day and often only decides on the day itself where to fish. They provided help and advice in finding fish, selecting flies and advising on which techniques to use. All guides supply local hot fly patterns to their clients and often prefer you to use their own proven patterns. The swapping of patterns and techniques is actually one of the nicest things about being guided. But by far the most important asset of all is their ability to spot fish. Trout are masters of camouflage and usually blend into their surroundings. The colour of this fish reflects the colour of the stream bed in this part of the river. This is where a guide is worth his weight in gold. Thanks to them, we learnt exactly what to look for. 
Often the only thing that distinguishes a fish from the surrounding rocks is the movement of its tail or its shadow. It's no exaggeration to say that on some rivers we would have walked past 90% of the fish without even being aware they were there. When you are low down at water level, it can be difficult to see the fish you are casting to. The guide proves to be invaluable in this situation, offering verbal and visual guidance. Good. Oh, too much. Hang on, might go over that. Come up. No, don't. Too far over, mate. Come back about a foot left. Ooh. Hang on, mate. He's out in the middle there. Oh, I just went away. Hang on, I just went away. Come back again. Right, back there again. As long as we were careful not to make sudden moves, it was possible to get quite close to the fish before presenting the fly. Don took over ten minutes inching his way to get close to this fish before presenting his dry fly with a devastating result. Oh, well done. Oh, good stuff. Oh, excellent. Good stuff. Excellent. You'll see the value of their support from coaching through to landing of fish. But it's not just about their local knowledge and technical skills. They have the ability to laugh off a situation when it goes per shape. And they'll share a beer at the end of yep. the day. Oh, <laughs> One of those days today. She's having a bad hair day. While most of us think about New Zealand fishing as being to sighted fish, it's true that some rivers can be fished without first seeing them. It is possible to succeed by blind fishing likely looking spots, but only if you know that the river holds a good head of fish. Steve and Dean explain which rivers would be suitable for each method. When fishing in trophy streams typified by the presence of a small number of large fish, we would have blanked if we had fished them blind. Really nice. The diversity of these rivers presented many challenges when it came to presenting the fly. We first looked for signs that the fish was feeding and we stayed out of sight. Do we fish directly upstream to the fish yeah, or would it be better to approach him from one side? Would eye sticking be appropriate? Eye stick technique was very useful in fast flowing water.